Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Power Is Now, business planning for real estate agents in 2023. My name is Eric Frazier, and with me is the fabulous Emmerich Peace. He is the owner-operator of Keller Williams, Prince George County, and Maryland. Thank you, Emmerich, for conducting this series of interviews uh, and lessons, if you will, about business planning for 2023. We're well into 2023, folks. We're finishing up the first quarter, and many of you are perhaps revisiting your business plans, and if you're not, you should. Uh, as we know, the business plans are living documents, and because the economy is changing, the market is changing, we have to be willing to adapt to change ourselves. Uh, and that means our business plan must be a living document that we are constantly reviewing and making adjustments. So far in this uh, incredible series, we've talked about a lot. We started with the basics, you know, why business planning is so important. Why do you need a business plan? And Emmerich Peace really laid it out for us. I mean, if you missed that, you got to check it out. That was part one on why business planning is so important. And along with business planning, why branding is so important. We talked about the importance of building a brand. And a brand is really everything in business. And it seems like the more known and popular the brand is, uh, the more expensive it is, right? And so uh, people who operate having established a brand never work with price. Price is never part of their value proposition. It's who they are, it's how they serve people. And then we looked into you know, your story, your, your reason why, the reason why you're in the business, your origin story. What is your story? And can you articulate your story to the consumer? Uh, what is it about your background and what is interesting about you that could resonate with the consumer and establishing your, your story, your origin story, and being really clear on how you're communicating that is so important as it makes you a real person, authentic, someone that uh, your potential client may want to do business with. Because we all know people do business with whom they know, like, and trust. And then we get into... Uh, with their origin story, we move into your mission, you know, why you're in the business, your vision, where you see yourself, your core values as a real estate professional and as a business owner, what are your core values? And this is important because uh, you, there's certain things you're just not going to do. There's certain markets you're not going to serve. There's certain products and services you're not going to do. So you've got to be clear on your mission, your vision, your core values, what you believe, why you're in this business. And then we moved into social media. Social media is a game changer today. I mean, ever since the advent of the internet and the iPhone, if you haven't been trying to get online in a substantive way, you are really missing out on the opportunity to build your brand and your presence online. And so we talked about becoming a thought leader and an expert online. And the only way to do that is through teaching. You know, you've got to be speaking like Emmerich is doing for us now. You have to be writing, which Emmerich does in our national magazine. Or you have to be creating content like videos and podcasts, which Emmerich does on the Powers Now TV. And in doing so, you enable yourself to build a body of work that uh, will live forever online because everything you do is forever online. For every article you write, every show you do, every, every lesson, every, every market update or listing interview you do, these things add up. And the more you do, the easier it is for Google to find you. And we all know what everybody does. They ask Google whenever they need anything and they check you out when they first meet you. So. That's a summary of what we've covered so far, folks. And we're now coming to what might be the final chapter of this series. And Emmerich, this has been an education. I think I have the best seat in the house, man. I'm sitting at the foot of a master in business. And you have not only the experience, the reputation, but the results. You run a huge team, 600 agents in Prince George County, Maryland. You're one of the top real estate owners and professionals in this business, especially within the Keller Williams franchise. And I am just honored that you are a VIP agent on the Power Is Now Media. Well, you know, Eric, it's a, it's a pleasure for me to be here. As much as um, 
you're receiving from me, I'm receiving from you, because it's interactive dialogue. And it's all about growing. It's all about exposure. It's all about how do we travel down this path of this thing, this road called success together. And so I'm just excited to be here. I'm excited to be a VIP agent on The Power Is Now. Um, lots and lots of benefits. That's the best way I can say it. Lots and lots of benefits. And some people say, well, what are the benefits? What are the benefits? Just dig a little deeper. I guarantee you, you'll discover whether it's exposure on, on internet, whether exposure in social media, whether exposure on, uh, on television. It's just, it's exposure. It is exposure. And the beautiful part about it, Eric, it's really great exposure because all of the sessions are professional. They're professionally edited. And the value of content of the speakers that you bring to the table. Wow. You know, and it's something that we can't get anywhere. It's only something that we can get at the powers now. And I love it. Thank Just you, a quick Andrew. infomercial. Just a quick infomercial. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate that. And folks, go to our website, thepowersnow.com. And on the menu bar, you'll see become a VIP agent. You'll see an actual webinar you can watch and, and learn about all that we do, uh, everything that Emmerich is talking about. Emmerich, it, it truly is an honor for me to have these discussions with you. And yes, we're, 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 we're helping each other. We're educating each other. But I have to tell you, man, I mean, I, I have really learned a lot in this series so far, and I really don't want it to end. Uh, this is part six, and we may do some more, folks. So you just never know what might happen. But uh, mm -hmm. we, we have brought everybody from the start of a business plan to now we're down to the brass tacks. We're down to, you know, getting up early in the morning and starting your day. And in fact, let's start there. Let's start there, Emmerich. You know, what time do you get up in the morning? What time should every real estate professional get up in the morning to get ready for their day? I believe you should get up somewhere between 5 and 5.30. I was getting up at 6. I've been getting, I was, I've gotten up at 7. For me, 5 to 5.30 is a beautiful time because between 5 and 5.30, I get up and actually it's close to 5. Um, and I get up, I get myself together. Um, I I put my drink and, uh, and shake regimen together. It's a time when I'm just, it's nobody there. The house is quiet. I'm working on those kind of things. Before I go to the gym, I take a little quiet time. I go to the gym. I get my workout. After I leave the gym, I go sit by the pond and I just become a lot uh, uh, reflective at the pond. So I sit at the pond for probably, it's, uh, it's supposed to be 30 minutes, 30 minutes. Sometimes 30 minutes turns into an hour, turns into an hour and a half. And it's just time to reflect and just unwind and just, you just unpack what the rest of your day is look is going to look like, and then by nine o'clock I'm moving. Now nine o'clock, um, I'm getting myself ready to be at the office. Ten at the absolute latest. If I spend extra time at the pond, if I do like I'm supposed to do, and I spend thirty minutes at the pond, I'll be at the market center. I'll be at the office by nine o'clock. Sometimes you just have to take that extra me time. And in the morning, me sitting at the pond is the extra me time. And so when you start to take a look at that, you know, 5, 5.30 is really a great time. The sun is not up and it gives you time to just cruise through the beginning of your day, mapping things out in your mind. And it's time alone. So what time do you go to sleep? If you're going to get up that early, are you trying to get in six, seven, eight, nine hours of sleep because that's pretty early in the morning for a lot of people. Um, theoretically, <laughs> theoretically, you should be in the bed. You should be in the bed around by ten. Notice I said theoretically. Um, I, I'm, I'm a little, I'm a little different. I take time in the evening and I unwind. And I'm usually by eleven fifteen, eleven thirty. I'm getting in the bed, and I know it's not the optimal amount of sleep. Uh, it's just not. Uh, that's just my regimen. I would not suggest that to other people because some people just really can't function on, you know, five, four to five, five, I'm about, about five hours, five, about five to six hours of sleep. Most people can't function that way. I don't do well with eight hours. I can't even stay asleep. I'll be up 
if I go to sleep at, if I would go to sleep when I'm supposed to go to sleep at like 9.30, I would be up by four. There are studies that show that the older we get, you know, I'm, I'm 60, on my way to 61. Right. Um, that as you get older, you don't really require a lot of sleep. But then again, I've, I've heard recent studies that say that sleep is probably the most important thing you can do for your overall general health yes. and to present disease, prevent disease and things of that nature from happening. So um, it's something about these studies, man. Sometimes there's studies that come out and say you should do something and then they flip it, flip it on you and say you shouldn't do it. It's like coffee and uh, eggs. Well, and, it's, you it's, know? No, Eric, it's like <laughs> statistics, right? I had an older gentleman tell me that lies in their statistics. Because depending on who's doing this, who's giving you the statistics, that's what's going to dictate what the outcome, what what are they, what, what outcome are they attempting to manipulate? And that's what you're going to hear. And right. I believe that you have to know your body and understand your body. Yes. Within reason. Yeah. Within reason. Don't, I mean, you can't say that I do good off of two hours of sleep. That's just, that's not a prudent uh that's not a prudent way of living your life. No, There's two hours of sleep. It's probably, you're probably going to run in the ground. You're absolutely right. So. Now, uh, of what you said, though, uh, two things I'm taking away is one, you're getting in your exercise mm -hmm. and you're reflecting. Uh, and I think that, you know, getting your mind right, reflecting, doing affirmations, praying, reading, uh, I think those things are good for the soul, for the mind, right? So that yes. you show up uh, in a way that is positive and that you are you're being a source of uh, at least positivity or inspiration for others as opposed to bringing people down. Nobody wants to be near anyone who is down in the dumps and want to bring everybody with them as well. Absolutely. And, and yeah, that's, a, that's another key. When, when you become reflective, uh, reflective, being reflective for me is about gratitude, right? It's about what am I grateful for? It's about going inside and understanding that, you know, gratitude is the path to future success and future accomplishment. If you're not grateful for what you have, it's kind of hard to get something else, something else. Does that make sense? It does. I love that. Gratitude is the path to future success and future accomplishments. And it's interesting because uh, it just makes sense. How do you expect to gain more if you're not grateful for what you have right now? Learning kind of to be content, but not necessarily satisfied, right? Absolutely. And, and, and you know, it, that, let's be clear. I, and, I'm being, and, and I'm not saying this from any other way except um contentment is not a place to live i'm i'm you know never is an absolute i don't think i'm ever content until you're absolutely doing it the best it can be done you can never be content and the reality is that once you're doing it the best it can be done then the best that you're doing becomes a new floor now you're always looking at how can you better yourself no matter what you're doing you can always better yourself you have to be learning based you have to be growth based so being content um i don't understand what that looks like wow that, that is interesting you're right um contentment uh, should come when you feel you have done all that you can do right that you are operating at the highest and best level uh, and then perhaps it's time to set new goals then, right? It, you know, Eric, that you said something. You said something. Contentment is when you're doing the best you can do. Here's the reality, right? You shouldn't be content because the best that you can do does not mean that that's the best that can be done. Mm. Now, mm. if you're doing the best that you can do, maybe you should do some homework and research and learn how to do it better. Wow, uh, man! <laughs> yeah, and that's that, that's real. That is real. Room for, there's always room for improvement. No, you're absolutely right. In fact, that represents the market, doesn't it? That there's always someone mm -hmm. who is uh, coming after you, 
right. to do it better than you, right? And so you constantly have to be, you know, retooling and looking at what you do and seeing how you can be better, better as a person, better as a, a salesperson, better as a advisor, better as a practitioner, just better. This better as a human. And when you said something like, and for me, I don't, I'm not concerned with the people around me, whether someone's coming after me, I'm concerned with me. I'm competing. Mm -hmm. I'm always competing against myself because if I am not the person who's out in front, then that means I'm not doing my best. Does that make sense? And unless you, oh, lead, unless you're the lead dog, the view never changes. Right. And then second place is really the first place loser. And, and so who are you really competing against? You're competing against yourself. If you're not doing it the best it can be done, don't worry about anybody else. Who are you just joining us? We're talking to Emrick Peace. And man, <laughs> is he dropping some gems here. You know, if you're the lead dog, the view never changes. And second place means you're just the first place loser. Lord have mercy. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to take a break, folks. And when we come back, we're going to learn more from Emory Peace on business planning for 2023 for real estate agents. And we're going to get into the brass tacks. All right. You got up now at five or, so, five or six o'clock in the morning. Five or five thirty. Five or five thirty. Five thirty in the morning. The sun is up. You got to beat the, the sun, sun up, up, Eric. <laughs> All right. So the sun is up. You've done your meditation, your reflection, you read a little bit, you got some exercise in, and you're hitting the office at nine o'clock in the morning. What should you do? What is the first thing you ought to be doing and thinking about? We're going to learn about that next, right here on Business Planning for Real Estate Agents 2023. You're listening to or watching The Power Is Now. Want to keep up with the current developments happening in the world of real estate? The Real Estate Roundtable, hosted by Eric L. Frazier, is a show you do not want to miss. The show features a panel of VIP agents who are passionate about helping people. It is what they do best. They discuss today's hot topics, latest market updates and trends. The panel also conducts interviews with prominent figures in the industry. New episode every Friday live on Facebook and replay on the Power Is Now YouTube channel. 